Hey everyone, welcome back to Nintendo Prime Reacts. It has been a long, long time. In fact, I don't think we've done one of these since E3. Um, so, this time around, I have Mr. Eric Moore from the Nintendo Prime Podcast joining us. What's up, everybody? And throughout this video, you're going to see footage of one of the games from the Nintendo Direct. That being Project Octopath Traveler. Thank you, Square, for releasing a demo the same day of announcing the game so that's that's pretty cool uh we're not gonna start there though people are gonna get plenty of their fill and it's really interesting at the beginning of this game but that, that goes beyond the direct because i know i know additional information based on playing it uh let's just dive in this direct was 45 minutes long roughly dealt with 3ds and wii u games uh yeah, switch games not wii, wii u switch ay ay right Hey, and you just you just made a comment earlier that you uh, you cover Nintendo, <laughs> right? I cover Nintendo, and I apparently <laughs> thinks there's a Wii U one. Um, did any of the 3DS games interest you? Because you and I have been very vocal about how we're done with 3DS. Uh, yeah, yeah. Actually, surprisingly, some of them did. I can't remember the names off the top of my head, but so that shows you how much interest they actually had. But some of them looked actually really, really good. Well, the one that, the one that really caught my eye, because there was a, there was actually a few. And Radiant Story was one. Yep, Radiant um, Story. Yeah, that was yep, one. Yeah, that one that of them. that one. I mean, it was good originally. It's going to be even better now. Uh, the hundred mini game collection of Mario Party. Yes. Yes, definitely. Like. The mini games, I guess, have always been the best part of Mario yeah. Party. Yeah. So, like the hundred greatest, like I know it's from across the whole series, but can they just cut off like the last four iterations? <laughs> I don't think any of those make the, my top one hundred, anyways, uh, for favorite yeah. mini games. Now, if they want to throw in some Pokemon Stadium mini games in yes. there, yes, right. I mean the Ekans Ring Toss. You mean the the, the complete and utter uh, <laughs> Eleanor uh, button wrecker of the uh, the Dig Dug? Oh, or, like, the yeah. digging. Yeah. With uh, Sandra. Oh yeah. It goes. Oh yeah. Oh, oh that God. was insane. Man, the hours wasted on that. But again, uh, really cool. What, what I found interesting is how interested I was in the 3DS games. And while I'm interested in all of them, the whole time I'm watching, I kept thinking, and why can't this also be on Switch? Right, exactly. Like, Fire Emblem Warriors, they ended with that. Like, that was like their mm -hmm. big ending game for. For 3DS, and it's like, this but, but, like but, but that, but that, it is coming to Switch. Okay. So Final Warriors actually is coming on Switch okay. on 3DS, so it's like, so that was the big game you ended with, and it's like, but, I mean, why can't you just do all your games like that on 3DS and Switch from this point moving forward? Um, I guess the idea is because you still want to give exclusive content to 3DS people, but 3DS sales, at least in the United States and Japan, have been tanking this year since, well, not tanking. See, like... We have to put tanking, tanking in perspective. The Xbox One sales have been tanking this year. The actual sales of 3DS have just went on a massive decline. They're now, they, sometimes they were number one, sometimes better than PlayStation, and now they're like number three, selling 100,000 or less every month in the United States. And they're clearly not even close to number one. Well, I shouldn't say not even close, but they're not number one. It used mm -hmm. to be number one in Japan all the time. Now it's switched by a landslide. Uh, and PlayStation 4 actually hops up ahead of 3DS on some weeks, depending on what games come out. So, 3DS sales have definitely slowed down a lot. And that doesn't mean that, that they're doing poorly, it's just, you could definitely tell it's coming towards the end of life. And as you're looking at the games that got announced, I'm like, they're, these are actually really good, really interesting games. I mean, there's another Professor Layton game coming up that's starring his daughter. And the Professor Layton games have always been really cool puzzle I was going to say, that one did look pretty yeah. decent. Yeah, because it because the Lightning games are really good. Just like they have an origin story game coming out for uh, Ace Attorney now. Mm -hmm. like, there's never been an origin story, so that really interests me. I haven't played all the Ace Attorney games. It's just, you're already this top attorney, blah, blah, blah. Like, how, how did you get there? It would be yeah. really interesting playing right, right. a game that kind of shows that. Uh, maybe you actually lose some cases early on. I don't know. Yeah. But uh, at least that's what I could think. Because I'm like, you don't just become a stud. Objection! Yep. Like, right away, do you? I mean, I guess. Maybe you could. You're, you're ace you tournament. You're, yeah. you're a beast. Um, but, uh, yeah, it, the games actually all really, really interest me. But that's, I mean, I'm not surprised because, 
I mean, I'm surprised that so, so many quality games were announced, but I'm not surprised they interest me because it's not like I hate games on 3DS. Right. I just, like, you could just up it and put it on Switch, and I'd be just as happy. Yeah. That, that, and that's kind of where I'm torn here, where, yes, putting it on a Switch, you know, there could be, like, Fighting the Warriors is obviously vastly superior on Switch, but they don't always have to do like that. I mean, look at what one of the Switch games, and we already brought it up because that's the footage going on this whole time, Octopath Travelers, very much could be a 3DS game. Yeah, but definitely. It's, High res textures on Switch, mm-hmm. so it's like you mean HD 2D. HD 2D. We'll get to that later. Yeah. But it's it's one of those things that there's no reason to me that these games can't be on Switch anymore. And you can't tell me port and it's that difficult. The Switch's hardware is so much more powerful than the 3DS. They probably don't even have to optimize it. Right. They literally could just put it on there and it's probably going to work. Mm-hmm. Uh, so I mean, obviously they have to make some adjustments, two screens, one screen, blah blah blah. But that's just it, to me. It doesn't seem like it would be that difficult. And I know it would help. Obviously, I'm someone that that feels Switch. One of the big appeals of it is that it's a home console and it's a portable. Right. And it's that it's the idea. Nintendo's never said they were going to do this, but it's the idea of all of Nintendo's teams focusing on a single system. Right. Um, and a lot of the games that got announced aren't weren't by Nintendo. Right. They're all third party games for the most part. Uh, for 3DS, so it's not like, you know, maybe that is exactly what Nintendo's doing, but it would be interesting, you know, or or I would prefer anyways if they would convince the third parties, be like, look, you can keep supporting the 3DS, it's got the install base, that's fine, but why don't you also bring these games over to Switch? Look at all these companies that are heavily success stories. There was uh, a bunch of indies who came out this week and were like, hey, look, our game is sold best on Switch. It's been on a PlayStation 4, Steam. Xbox, blah, 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 but none of them have sold more copies than it's selling on Switch. And one might argue it's because the Switch is starving for content, which I don't think it is. Uh, the other argument is just that the Switch isn't oversaturated yet. So, mm-hmm. like, Steam, it's really... You know, a lot of people have this opinion that if you release a good indie game, it is going to rise to the top. But that's not really true on oversaturated platforms. Mm-hmm. You know, Steam. I, I think they just had like a mil, or I don't mean not a million, but they had a like they just set a record for the most amount of games uh, released in a year last year, and they're set to pass that this year. And when you have that many games coming out, it, it's really hard to get noticed unless you have a marketing budget or unless a video influencer like myself or you know obviously someone way more popular than me mm-hmm. picks up the game and plays it. Uh, and puts it on the stream, and this obviously gets to the controversy right now on YouTube about, you know, who has all the rights. You know, obviously the guy who created, the people who created the game have all the rights to who can stream it and who can do this. But then those games don't sell without the streamer, so it's kind of this back and forth because um, they need each other, right? Like, like streamers need the games to play, mm-hmm. but these games don't get noticed without the streamers. So it's. Interesting thing, and there's this whole issue with PewDiePie right now because he said, yeah. said some bad stuff. Yeah. So it's like, and Firewatch does want to take things down. So like, you know, you're spinning this all, all all into this area with all these indie games, I feel like they should just bring them all to Switch. Um, obviously, most indies don't have any problem with people streaming their games, and you know, in, in the case of PewDiePie, it'll be interesting if that ever goes to court because right now legally. DMCA claims and all that stuff are, like, the, the rights all stand with the creator of the game. But it's never actually been settled in a court case. Mm-hmm. So, you know, I, I don't know which... You would presume it's going to go the obvious legal method of the people who made the game can decide who can stream it. But then uh, no one's really argued the fair use before. And, you know, what's, what, what, tr- what, 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 makes it, what makes it, what makes it transformative? What well, makes it transformative? Yeah. Because that, that's what fair use is. It's, it's a transformative uh, work on it, so whatever. Uh, but if all these indie games come to Switch, I feel like that's just going to make even more people stream it, too. Be- and, and that's one reason I brought it up, because you can't. no one's really going to stream 3DS games unless you have a modded 3DS. They're right. expensive. You have to wait a long time to get them. 3DS is kind of on the way out, so it doesn't make a lot of sense to invest in it right now. And 
I have someone who has a lot of 3DS and I just don't care. I can tell you guys right now, you're probably never going to see 3DS footage on my channel unless it's for a specific type of video. Like if I'm doing a theory, like say I want to try to put together the Pokemon timeline. Well, yeah. obviously I'm going to have to record some footage of all the Pokemon games, which I'm telling you right now, I'm not going to make a theory <laughs> of all the Pokemon <laughs> timeline. But you know, it's just an example. Unless it's like a long-winded piece like that, you're really not going to see me use it uh, to play these games and show them off because I... I don't have the money. Let's just put it that way. Mm -hmm. I'm not going to act like I'm, I'm Mr. Poor over here, but it's I, I can't afford to invest in two platforms from Nintendo anymore. I don't even think I ever could, to, if I'm being honest. And, you know, you always were kind of sticking with the handhelds after a while. Um, and you get your Xbox, you had your your Game Boys and stuff, and that that it's a lot easier to support one platform versus two. Yep. And that's why I really want all these games that like these fantastic rating history and all these games to come over to Switch. Uh and just do a dual release. So you take advantage of the big audience 3DS already has and then you tap into the new audience and you make you establish yourself with that audience. Mm -hmm. Um and then if you want to abandon 3DS later because Nintendo's done with it, it's fine. You're already made inroads in with the Switch. Yep. Um and heck, you might find out and that people... because the because the Switch is not as saturated as the 3DS, your game might sell even better. Well, and not just that, but people are already, you know, looking to develop for the Switch then. They already know how to. Yeah. These indie developers, if they release them both on the 3DS and the Switch, they're already going to know how to develop for the Switch. And, and that's the thing. Like Some people say, you know, any, any arguments that hear out there, yeah, but the Switch is a home console. It should have home console quality games. One, indie games don't. I mean, come on. Indie games are, exist on all platforms. And mm -hmm. two, look at Octopack Travelers that you're watching play right now. That looks like a game that should be on 3DS, but it looks fantastic on the Switch. And these games could look that much better if they were also on Switch. And, you know, I guess you could argue it degrades the 3DS version, but guess what? 3DS version can be cheaper. Right. And you, you can get rid of the expectations of being like, look, th this game is $8 on 3DS, $10 on Switch. People might throw up in the right. air, but then you got to HD versus not HD. You right. know, to think about movies. When you go rent a movie online, you know, it, it's, it, it might be $4 for standard F, $6 for HD, $8 for 4K because that's the way to, it works. You go to Redbox, Red yeah. you get your, your fifty for your DVD and your $2 for your Blu-ray. Yeah, it's, like it, it, people are, are willing to accept that because the differences are obvious there. Yeah. But, yeah, it's... I, I'm pleasantly surprised by the lineup, but I'm also like... I know I'm not going to play these games. I know I just know I'm investing all my money in Switch, and I'm not going to be playing these mm -hmm. games. And I, I think that's what I'm frustrated with is that they did announce good games that I'm not going to play. Right. The only one that I would ever actually think about playing out of that list is going to be Radiant Historia. Oh, for sure. So it does look it looks so, so fantastic. So. so let's spin this around then and talk about some Switch because I was actually also pleasantly surprised that they spent like 10 minutes on that and like, 40 minutes on, on Switch stuff. Um, Are you really that surprised? <laughs> no, but, you know, when they come out and they say it's going to be Switch and 3DS, and they have that many quality 3DS announcements, it's like, really? Then what are they going to do with the Switch? Um, and they didn't do what I thought they were going to do. I thought they were going to have one big, like, new, like, huge announcement. Mm -hmm. um, like, a, a new Nintendo game that we don't know about. Uh, that, that didn't happen. Pretty much all the games that we saw from Nintendo themselves that they make are games we already knew about, um, which is fine. There's nothing wrong with that. Right. There, there's a whole bunch of games coming. Uh, that's great, but it's just weird. That it it, it would be weird that we didn't we didn't get that. But now that doesn't mean there weren't any big announcements. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, we might as well just get this out of the way right now. Bethesda is bringing two more games. Yep, they're bringing Doom, like the brand yep. new Doom, and they're bringing. The Wolfenstein 2 subtitle version or whatever that hasn't even released on the other platforms yet. It comes out some uh, October or something yeah. on the other platforms. I think it releases the same day as Mario Odyssey, actually. Mm -hmm. But he, obviously, they're not getting on a Switch until 2018. But it, as much as I want to criticize, oh, we're not getting a day and date, we know this is year one of Switch. We know that the decision to bring this game was after it was already in development. So it, it's one of those that year one is the one time I can accept delays. Now... Mm -hmm. If they decide they want to bring their next big game 
you know, Bethesda wants to bring their next big game to Switch next year. Now I'll get upset if there's if there's it, delays. To me, it's more of when the development starts. Yeah, and and where you're at in the development process when you all of a sudden decide you're bringing it to the Switch. If it's really really early in the development process, you should be able to get it to the Switch the same day. If it's late in the process, the game was already almost out. I get it. Yeah, and I think like, that's what it is. Year one with Switches. Even, I don't even, even know if two ish. The beginning extent. of it, of it yeah. is you know once you get to the holiday part. Well, it also depends too because like Dishonored two, you know twenty eighteen comes out. It, it's it, it could very well uh, because it's been in development for so long. It could also be delayed if it was coming to Switch. But the idea here is that Bethesda. Not just, like, the Doom ports, whatever, right? We, mm-hmm. Doom has ran on the Tegra X1 before um, a couple years ago, so that's not as surprising because they literally have already ran it on this hardware. that They know they can do it. But when they announced the Wolfenstein 2, I was just like, wait a second. That hasn't even released yet. Yeah. This is the first time, uh, besides Madden and NBA 2K, that we got an announcement about a game that hasn't even released on the other platforms yet that's coming to Switch. And it's a major third-party title, major multi-platform, from a company that is revered in the gaming industry, especially out west. Right. Uh, and it's... I'm happy. Mm-hmm. I'm, I'm, oh, for uh, sure. It's like... And well, one third-party company that's never supported Nintendo gets it. They have three major games landing over the next year. Skyrim, and then they have... Doom. Uh, Doom, and then they have Wolfenstein. Wolfenstein, and that's all hitting within 12 months, and it's like, okay, yeah, it, it's delayed, it's not on time with everything else, but it's probably going to sell. Those games are really, really good games. Yeah, uh, It does suck. This wasn't from the Direct. I thought this up before the Direct. Skyrim is not going to allow mods, and you can mod it on PS4 and Xbox One, so it is a bit of a downfall. Um, uh, was- he did note, he said... They might do it later. Like right, it, it yep. doesn't have mods at this time. Right. Yep. So I think I that's another. That I think it's another. If it sells really well, they'll add a patch and put mods in. I think mm-hmm. is kind of where it's at. Or they just the the addition of mods uh, would delay the game further uh, because it wasn't. You know, they never built that mod thing around the switch, so it's just going to take more time. I don't know. You're not going to get the full story unless it comes out. If they release a patch for it later, they'll, then they'll probably give you a reason why it wasn't there day one. Mm-hmm. Uh, and they're never going to say it's because they're waiting for sales, because then that Right, just, right. Oh, no, for sure. They'll, they'll, it's they'll give good, you something. It, so, it, it'll, it'll be, even if that's what it is, you're never going to hear that out of them. Right. But the fact that they're bringing Doom and the fact that they're bringing Wolfstein, at that point, this is the kind of third-party commitment I think I've been waiting for with right. Switch. And to be completely honest, this is how good Wolfenstein looked. I can't remember what I was watching on YouTube. But a Wolfenstein ad came on. And normally, I'm one of those that just goes, ad. Yeah, yeah, just through, wait click to through, skip, click wait through. to skip, yeah. I watched this full ad. It, it was that interesting of an ad. Yeah, well, the, it looked, the, the like, game looked freaking awesome. Wolfenstein, uh, the one that released earlier, is really, really good. Um, I have played little bits of it. I don't own it. I am going to own this one on Switch. I, I want it that bad. It, it I mean, I'm like killing Nazis. I mean, I, yep, I, I yep, hate, I hate yeah. saying that like that's a, a selling point, but I'm like, I'm sorry, like Castle Wolfenstein, all the old school Wolfenstein. I grew up with that stuff. My yep. dad grew up on it. I grew up on it. Um, I, you know, I really liked the the reboot of the Wolfenstein thing that kind of happened, and I I just like Bethesda. They make really good games. Um, so it was really nice to see that uh, taken to a new level with Switch, having that third-party support. And it wasn't even just those games. Uh, there, there, were, there were several other third-party games announced. Um, some of them were rumored or already known. Uh, you know, well, One thing I thought was weird is that when they were talking about Rocket League and talking about the new cars and all that stuff, uh, they still didn't give us a release date. They still said 2017. And yeah. I'm like, yep. there's only three and a half months left. You know, right. still don't know when this thing's coming out? Right. Um, it, it was just a little off-putting to me, just like, what, do you have something to add to the Rocket League? Yeah, um, it, I don't know if this was true, but I thought I heard this, that with the, with the new Mario and Luigi cards, they're tied to a certain team color, mm-hmm. which, why? That doesn't make any sense to me. If you want to play as Luigi, play as Luigi. Yeah, and just play as that team color. 
but do you even get a choice of the team color? I don't know. Playing, I haven't played exactly. Rocket League. I, well, I'm sure you get to choose the team you're on. I don't remember. I have. It's been a while since I've actually played Rocket League. I haven't League played Club. Rocket League at all, so I, I have it's no idea. It's been a while since I played. I have no and idea. I played on PC. Not and then, like, on... the Metroid car looked really yeah. cool, too. It, it did, but to me, to have it be locked into a t- certain team is Maybe just... all the cars are locked that way, though. Maybe that's just how the game is. Mm, not that I know of. Oh, well, I don't yeah. know. I, again, I mean, we're, we're yeah. Rocket League noobs. I'm going to get it because I, it looks fun every time I see gameplay of it. I'm oh, like, it is. I just haven't, I'm afraid it's one of those games that's going to be like Madden. I just can't stop. Yeah. I'm going to keep turning oh, it, it on and playing it. it. Um, but, I mean, this is not a bad thing. I do need footage for my YouTube channel. I guess yeah, if it's right? footage yeah. of Rocket League, yeah. then it is what it is. Right, right. if, if Rocket League comes out and for three months, every video is just footage of Rocket League, I apologize. Hey, it's on Switch. I promise. <laughs> <laughs> it, it will be on Switch. Um, it's not. It's, not it's be got easy. that crossplay with yep. with Xbox and PC. So yeah. Um, but yeah, it. There was a lot of really good announcements for for Switch. Obviously, as I said, nothing nothing from Nintendo side that was surprising, but just a lot of surprising uh, collaborations and partnerships and support. Uh, you know, they, they had that shooting game. I already forget what it's called. Where like you shoot some guys' body parts and they're shrinking, oh, yours gets uh, bigger. Um, that uh, was Warfare's really, Law. Yeah, and, and that was that was uh, we kind of knew it was coming to Switch already. Uh, I didn't I didn't know before this that it was console exclusive to Switch because it was I think it's already out on PC if I remember. Um, that looks really really interesting. Yeah, uh, I got really excited during our live stream because I'm like, yes, like that was like a fun unique IP and console exclusive. Like I'm not necessarily for console exclusive third party games. I think multi platform is the way all third parties should go. But it's still it's one of those. It's one of those, it's just another feather in the Switch's hat. Like, we have this serious competitive game. Mm-hmm. Um, speaking of serious competitive games, they announced the new MOBA. And I know it's like, oh, it's a yeah. MOBA. It looks like every other MOBA in the world. It looks yeah. like League of Legends. Looks yeah. like looks like every MOBA. And they even at one point in the video said, oh, all those things you like about MOBAs, it'll have those. It's like, <laughs> it's like basically admitting we blatantly ripped off every MOBA <laughs> um, on the market. Yeah, I'm concerned but, that the map itself looked almost identical to yeah. League. It was like, I'm like, so not League. Yeah. That, right. So so Nintendo couldn't get the real League of Legends right. on Switch, so they yes. got a knockoff of yes. on Switch. Yes, Um But it looked good. It, it, it looks like MOBAs. I know some people roll their eyes, oh, it's a MOBA. I'm like, yeah, well, they're, that's a hugely popular medium. It and is. Nintendo they're has, fun games. Nintendo's going to have what at least looks on the surface to be a quality MOBA game. Uh, we'll see if it takes off on Switch. I don't know. You know, maybe it takes advantage of the touchscreen when you're in portable. That would be kind of cool. Um, just to, like, draw a thing and let my character run there instead of me having to, like, move the cursor with my thumbstick. But it, we'll see how it works. I haven't played a ton of MOBAs. Um, they're a lot of fun. They remind me a lot of old-school single-player games uh, that have become multiplayer. Uh, so... Yeah, I'm looking forward to that one as well. Uh, a lot of the games I saw for Switch, every time I'm like, uh, if, you, if you guys were, were there during the live show, I kept saying, oh, I'm going to buy that, I'm going to buy that, I'm going to buy that. Oh, it depends on pricing, but I'm probably going to buy that. <laughs> like As long as these Switch <laughs> right, games yeah. are not overpriced in my right. mind, and what constitutes overpriced, I don't know, because I haven't played them yet. But it, it's... You just kind of go by feel. Yeah, and, well, and the thing, but like, as the Switch games kept coming, kept coming, I'm like, okay, that looks good. That looks good. That looks good. Uh, okay, is there a Switch game that doesn't look good to me right now? Right. Like, like maybe the worst looking one was Kirby, and even that looked good to me. Yeah. So I'm like... Well, I, I guess if you're basing it purely, purely off of looks, the uh, <laughs> the uh, arcade Mario... <laughs> oh, yeah. We're, we're going to get to that next year. The arcade Mario, and I forget what... I, I apologize for not remembering what, what it was exactly called, the collection they have. Yeah, it was something arcade Mario. Something arcade Mario, yeah. It started yeah. with an A. And I, I'm i confused. We have the Neo Geo collection on there, we, which they sell the games individually, I think, actually. Uh, we have now this Mario Arcade, which looks like a collection pack of games. Yep. Is what I assume it is. They didn't announce yep. the price. They didn't announce when it's coming out. I, just, I don't think they announced when it's coming out. Ah, uh, yeah, I don't remember. Because that. if they didn't announce the price, why would they tell us when it's coming out? Uh, but it's frustrating. It frustrated me. Not because it's not cool to have a collection of classic games. Of course mm-hmm. it's cool to have a collection of these old, old school old Nintendo arcade games that some of you guys probably played on NES instead of arcades, but they originated in the arcades. Right. 
it, it's cool to have the arcade version of something. Like, like the arcade version of Punch-Out! I remember playing that in the yeah. arcades. It is yeah. vastly different than the one on NES. Yeah. Um, so I'm, I'm really excited about that. But it, it's one of those things that it, every time they get the, they reveal new game after new game after new game for it, and I'm just like, so we're getting Virtual Console. <laughs> kind of. So, so like, seriously, Nintendo just announced their, their, their own first classic games coming to Switch. That's Virtual Console. All of a sudden, I know it's a collection pack. I'm like, Okay. I, I, at this point, I'm convinced because that just happened. That they're, they're not, not doing, doing virtual console, console on Switch. Yeah, I don't think it's happening. Yeah, at all. I think the NES Classic Edition, SNES Classic Edition, this arcade collection pack. I think that's Nintendo's new approach to virtual console, and they're just not telling anyone because they know it's going to make a bunch of people really mad if they just outright say we're not doing virtual console anymore, which is really, really. Interesting, considering that Microsoft and Sony have fully bought into the whole bringing our old school games back with yeah. our, through subscription services and stuff. And Nintendo's like, we're just going to sell you little collection packs here and there, here and there. Some that are really hard to get physically. Other ones will just throw it together digitally, and we, who knows how much it costs. Um, right, right. And I'm, I'm not, I don't work at Nintendo, so they very much could have virtual consoles still in the works. But that was one of the biggest bummer announcements for me was... I got excited thinking, oh my god, they're finally, like, they're about to drop the bombshell that, like, these are going to be the, the launch games for Virtual Console at some point this year. Or, like, we'll be able to play these games for free on their online Virtual Console service that they're going to include in their subscription service for $20 a year next year. Like, I was waiting for some bombshell, like, oh my god, they're about to blow everyone's minds. They're bringing Virtual Console out. And then I'm like, but it's a collection pack. And if they're doing that with their arcade games, oh. yeah. What's to stop them from doing that with everything else? Right, right. Uh, so it's... What I'm saying is it doesn't look good for Virtual Console right now. No, but Based the game on, itself looks awesome. I mean, the games, are, <laughs> the games are great. The collection pack's great, but it's like... But, I mean... Right. Yeah, I never, I, I, I never actually thought unless that. Unless you're going to bundle every SNES game in the world together and charge me 10 bucks for the whole thing. Right, you could do that. I'll take that over Virtual Console. <laughs> right. But let's be, who needs the well, NES let's be honest. Or who needs the NES Classic? But let's be honest. When you were selling them at $10, $10 a pop before, you're not going to bundle them all together that cheap. So, it, I mean, the SNES Classic, you get 21 games for, for 80 bucks. So it's like, you're not going to make it that cheap. I it frustrated me. I'm glad it's happening, but it's like, just like the Neo Geo, and I was really confused when that released, and I'm like, why isn't that part of Virtual Console? Like, I know it's not a Nintendo system, so I thought maybe that's why. It's an outlier. They didn't want to be part of Virtual Console. I don't mm-hmm. know why, because they're selling the games individually anyways. Yeah. But they're basically their own Virtual Console. They're basically their own, their own Virtual Console. But I'm like, man, I don't know what Nintendo's thinking. Um, I'm excited this is happening, but... You know, and maybe this is just what they're doing for now, and they'll eventually add it to Virtual Console. Or maybe they just never planned to put the arcade games in Virtual Console. I don't know why. It is their classic game. It's their games. Their classic games. The games that started it all for Nintendo. But uh, it, it's it's just weird, and it's frustrating. And I think it just exemplifies how much Virtual Console matters to Nintendo's hardcore base, like myself. Uh, even though I never really took that big advantage of Virtual Console. I didn't buy a lot of Virtual Console games. But it's still frustrating to me to know that I don't have the option, mm-hmm. and that the right. only option I have might be just collection packs or hard to get um, hardware packs. Yeah, right. So I don't know. That's just me. I'm sure it's m- many of you two get get. Maybe you guys didn't even think about it in that light when you were watching. I guess like, Virtual Console. This is like this is what they announced for Virtual Console: classic games. Yep. Um, uh, no. One thing I, I one thing that that threw me off a little bit. They started off the Switch portion with Xenoblade Chronicles 2. Looks fantastic. I want to play it. I've avoided the original Xenoblade Chronicles. I avoided Xenoblade Chronicles X because these are JRPGs, and I grew up on JRPGs, and they suck your life. Mm-hmm. It, it, but then I'm like, but that's what Breath of the Wild is doing to me, so I guess <laughs> I, ch- I, I pick and choose what's going to suck uh, my potato, life. Potato, potato. Yeah, right. So it's like, but I know, like, I didn't know how much Breath of the Wild was going to eat into my time. I know how much a JRPG is going to eat into my day. And eat into my day, into my month, eat into my year. So I've been avoiding it, avoiding it, avoiding it, but I'm, I'm almost completely sold. Mm-hmm. However, despite the fact that, that their presentation of it almost completely sold me on I me, mean, like, I'm about 80% sure I'm getting it, maybe even day one if I can afford to. It is frustrating to me how they presented it because 
while some of this information was probably available, maybe most of it was available, to anyone who hasn't really been paying attention to Xenoblade Chronicles 2 that much, and you just paid attention to it now in the Internet Direct, where they gave you like 10 straight minutes or whatever it was, mm -hmm. it felt like an information overload. Mm -hmm. By the time they moved on to the explanation for all these new attacks or these new abilities, I already forgot everything they just said, mm -hmm. because it, it, RPGs are such an intricate thing. Mm -hmm. And when you're explaining all the intricacies at once, it gets really confusing to follow along. Oh, for sure. And now, for those of you that are veterans of the Xenoblade Chronicles series, you're probably like, oh, whatever, I follow along just fine, this and that. But see, I'm not. And a lot of people that own Switches might not be. They might mm -hmm. have never bought for it sure. on Wii. They, they probably didn't own a Wii U to play Xenoblade Chronicles X. And so they might be thinking of picking up this JRPG because it looks like a, a fantastic JRPG, but... It, it, it just sounded really more complex than it probably is. Or even if it is that complex, a lot different than the game itself is going to treat it. The game's going to introduce you to these mechanics slowly. That That's that's how you grow with, with RPGs. Is they don't just usually throw everything at you right away. You have a tutorial, kind of, and, and you just slowly gain new abilities and slowly learn them. And even if you have all the abilities right away, you NPCs in the game and different things introduce you to them. And I was frustrated... Uh, the more and more they kept showing of, uh, of it, the more and more I'm like, man. And even in the stream chat, there were some people in there that were like, this is too much Xenoblade Chronicles 2. It's too much. It's too much. It's too much. It's too much. It's almost turning me off from the game because there's just information overload. And I get it. Because I felt it too. The difference is, I know that's what JRPGs are like. So I wasn't turned off by it. I just thought in the format of a Nintendo Direct really wasn't the time to go that deep into every single mechanic in the game. Or like, 80% of them. Mm -hmm. um, lots of information. I'm sure people that that are that, that that's their number one game, they're buying a Switch for it, probably appreciated all that information. But I felt like they could have gave us like a snippet of that and released the rest of that I, separately. Right. To me, it was almost like a, a two separate video like ad. Because they started out with the like the information of the different what, kingdoms, yeah. right? Yeah. If they would have cut it off at that... That would have been fantastic, because after that they kind of lost me when they started going into the, into the, I'm a guardian or I'm a I'm a titan. Sorry, blah blah blah. And then all of a sudden, kind of, if they would have released that after the fact, yeah, and the direct, and then it's like, or stuff oh, like that. depending on which sword you equip, you yeah. are right. a healer or a, yeah. a tank or a right, damage right. doer. If, if they would have, released like, that, I remember these. The thing is, I remember these little bits and pieces, but I'm not going to remember all of that. And like I said, I was actually really hyped because that first half of the oh. of the thing was absolutely well done. Mm -hmm. And then once they showed the Xenoblade Chronicles two, and they went into the the other thing of it, it kind of fell apart to me there. Yeah, and the it, thing is, it's not that the game doesn't look bad. There's nothing right. wrong with it. It was just how it was presented um, was was done in a manner I think that shouldn't shouldn't have been done that way. Not not in a direct. Not in a direct. That's what I say. If they would have cut it better and released all that information, like like there was uh, a couple games they revealed, and they're like, "Hey, look, uh, today we're releasing uh, a, a longer version of this trailer on our channel." Yep. Okay, that's fine. You want to release that long thing separately for people who want to dive that deep. Right. Great when they have right. the time to to look at it, and they're not like when people are watching a direct. At least from my perspective, it's, I'm waiting for what are the announcements? What are the announcements? What are the it, announcements? What are the exactly announcements? It's exactly what it says. And, it should be direct. And when you're eating up that much time to go that deep into the game, it's like okay, no, no, that's what you do in a Treehouse Live. That's what you do mm -hmm. in a separate video. A direct, you just give us the trailer and you put a limit on it. You show off some cool stuff, get people hyped, and then done. Mm -hmm. Get into the intricacies later. Right. Um, so it's. I don't know. I, I just didn't like the way that it was done. I'm not any less hyped for it. I just feel... I could feel as they're going on, like, okay, who thought this was a good idea? Right, exactly. Because this is a fantastic game, and I almost think they're overdoing it, trying to hype it up. When they, it, it was actually perfect to stop at a certain point, and the hype would have been high, and then you could have did even a separate event for this later to, to hype it up in November right, or whatever. Because right. this is the... You know, there this, was, there December was, 1st. Right now, there was no need to release the the explanation of the mechanics. Uh, to me, they're right at this very moment, the mechanics don't matter. Yeah. In, in they way, really don't. They, they can be released a little bit closer to when the game actually comes out. Sure. It, it didn't need to be done now. It felt like they were forced into this thing. Yeah. 
So, <laughs> the the game they ended on obviously was Mario Odyssey. Uh, I figured they would either kick it off or end with it. They ended with it. I wish they didn't end with it because then that would have meant that they had one more big announcement. When they said, "Oh, we have one more thing to talk about," I'm like, "Oh, what is it?" I'm like, "Wait, they haven't talked about Odyssey yet, have they?" Um, and that's because we know so much about Odyssey already. Uh, I gotta say, it looked good. Um, it looks as fantastic as it always did. There was a lot mm-hmm. of new stuff they showed. Um, in terms of even some new classic things going on. Because uh, before we saw, you know, the, the merge into the wall and the 2D thing, they added even more classic elements in. Right. Uh, which just... Yeah. <laughs> just awesome. Donkey Kong. <laughs> like Donkey Kong. Just just awesome. Um, definitely, uh, they're definitely trying to breath of the wild this in that they're trying to bring the whole series together. Right. Uh, definitely. Which is really cool. I mean, they're not going this giant, massive Zelda-like open world. But they did show, like, a cool part. Because, uh, you know, we were talking about the map in, in the podcast. They they showed off uh, the world, the globe itself. And it's like a literal globe, globe. that you're... Yeah. I'm like, now that's a cool hub world. Right. That, I like that. I, I mean, I get that it's still point to point like Mario usually is. But that was pretty cool looking. Um, it, it really makes you feel like it actually is a cohesive world you're, you're in. Um, it, it was just a... You know, you know, they, they they revealed some names of some areas, and they said, "Oh, there's more worlds in this." Uh, that's fine. I think right now they've confirmed, or we know of at least ten worlds. There might be more. Uh, it, it's, I mean, it looks good. I I don't really have much more to add. It feels weird saying that I'm not any more hyped for the game than I was before. But one, I'm already really hyped. But they just didn't show me outside of some of the new classic stuff. Yeah. It's just like, oh, I've seen all this already. Right, and that's kind of almost to the point where, if they keep doing this and they don't, if they don't have anything new to show, it's actually almost taming my hype. It's kind of like I've I've seen this. This is okay. I'm getting bored with this. Yeah, it was, it was almost now. like the way they could have tempered it is if they did all this, and a lot of it's stuff we've already seen, stuff we already know about, if they would have been like, yeah, we understand, you know, maybe the, you, you guys already know about all this stuff, but, uh, by the way, we're dropping a demo on the eShop today. Because Nintendo right. never drops demos for their big games. Like, right. ever. Right. Like, ever. Even like, oh, the different Pokemon, that was Game Freak. Nintendo yes. th- made games themselves. Right. They don't do that. Right. And the Mario Odyssey demo exists. The E3 yeah. demo exists. Yeah. They, they could have found a way, gotten a team to clean it all up and release it on the eShop. Then it would have been like, yeah, okay, maybe you saw it, but now guess what? Now you can go play some right. of the stuff we're talking right. about. Go play. Fall and in love with the game yourself. It, are they still doing the Mario Odyssey stuff, kind of like what they were doing in the cities when you were going to go? What, the Nintendo World Championships? Yeah. Are they, or was that just a one-time thing? That was like just a, the Nintendo World Championships. Okay. So yeah. they're not doing like special events or anything. No. Okay. No. So then, yes, then they could have did that. Yeah. The, the, the thing is, there was no expectation of it because Nintendo doesn't do it. Right. But I'm just saying that, like, because it didn't feel like enough new information, and I think I don't know if it's just because there's not any more new information to show, or if it's just because Nintendo realizes we've released a ton of information already. Yeah. Oops. Uh, we're, we've kind of hit that peak where we. If we reveal more, suddenly it's like people don't even have to buy the game. They already know everything. Mm-hmm. Um, and that doesn't mean... It. There's nothing like playing games. Right, even if right. you're someone that loves, loves watching streamers, there is a big difference between watching someone play and playing for yourself. Uh, and watching you know trailers and hype and then playing the game. So it doesn't replace playing, but it's just like... And great, there's a lot we still don't know. It's not like they've shown off the entirety, I think, of any of the worlds. Right. But it, it, it's still... It just felt like... Outside of the new classic stuff in there, um, it, it, the, it, it, it almost making me it, jump out of my seat. Yeah, it, it almost lost the luster, I guess. Like, yep. Yeah, at E3, uh, when, when they revealed it, uh, all the stuff for it, it's like, okay, you can take over things. You can become a T-Rex. You can do this. You can do that. And, like, there were some cool moments in like, when he's stacking the Goombas up and everything. And I'm like, yep. I'm like this is really cool. This is really cool. But, like, I kind of figured you could do that. Mm-hmm. Uh, so, so it's kind of like... It's weird to me because I'm always someone that says you can't spoil a game enough, and uh, for me, and I, I remember thinking of all the, the hype for Breath of the Wild, and it was a lot different for me because I got to play the game at E3, um, right. which which gave me a totally different perspective than I have with Super Mario Odyssey, but I, I felt like they they kept having enough teases for Zelda uh, of new information to keep that hype train right. going. Where it, I feel like Mario Odyssey. 
it pla- it, it, it like peaked hardcore at E3, right. and then it's just kind of been steadily staying plateauing, plateauing, maybe going down a little bit, but not going down where people are less excited. It's more so people are ready to play it now. Yeah, you you, you hyped it to a point people just need it in their hands. And that's why I said, oh, it's not coming out for a month. Too fast. Yeah, it, it's not coming out for a month and a half. That's fine. Give us the demo. Right. That would have tied the people over. And then, oh, okay, got the demo, cool. And with Octopath Travelers, gave us the demo, great. And now I'm, I'm completely tied it over playing with two of these characters and going through however much story it lets me go through. And then I get to play the game when it comes out. Mm-hmm. If I oh, want to play sure. more. It would be really cool, too, you could transfer your save over. I, I, we don't know if that, some demos do allow you to transfer saves over, so you don't have to replay the beginning area again with that character. That be, I hope they do that with Octopath Travelers, because there's a lot of talking at the beginning of these. <laughs> yeah. uh, so far yeah. not the pet traveler which is fine they, they have to set up the story and set up all the characters I get it but uh, at least the character I chose Primrose has a lot of talking 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 uh, which is fine so far well it helps that the writing's really good and the voice acting is pretty good but yeah uh, it, setting that aside what's the game that you were most excited about from this direct I, I, nothing really made me jump out of my seat, to be completely honest. I mean, I was already hyped for Mar- Mario Odyssey, yep. so that didn't really, you know, make me go wow again. Um, what? Pokemon news then? Yeah, no. No. Mythical it, Celebi? Yes, Mythical Celebi. <laughs> when did that happen? <laughs> sure. Um, yeah. No, we were going to get roasted, like, Celebi's been mythical for three generations of a guy. Sure. Has it? I don't know. I haven't played... Yeah, since basically Gen two. Yeah, maybe three. Yeah. Wait, remember. nope. Sorry, I did have X or Y. One of the oh, two. Okay. Sorry, but I I played that so minimally yeah. that it was. Yeah. So uh, to be completely honest, nothing. Radio story. <laughs> huh? Yeah, right, actually, yeah. <laughs> to be completely honest, yeah, probably. Um, for the Switch games, I mean, I was super excited because I'm a nostalgia freak for the Mario. Arcade. Oh yeah. But, so yeah, I saw you reacting to that and I'm like, uh-huh. uh-huh. Because it, he because Eric watched it after the fact. Um, so I'm sitting well, there already knowing I was everything. watching I was watching it at work and then I got a phone call, so <laughs> I had to stop watching yeah. it. So I decided so to just see, not sit, go back to it. Yeah, so you're sitting here watching it and all of a sudden oh because it started off with some complaining. Maybe we should get into the complaints. Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah. Uh, what was the one thing we were debating about for a second? Oh, the 2DS XL. Oh, the 2DS XL. So they announced a new color, right? <laughs> not, really, not really a big deal. Um, and Eric's over there like, who gives a crap? I'm like, a lot of people, obviously, it, because they keep making them so they obviously are right, selling. Right, right. But it, <laughs> that's not something that I think needs to be in the direct. I mean, it... Congratulations! You have a they new... announced the 2DS XL at E3. That that makes sense though. Actually announcing a system at but I mean it's just but, a, it's but just a... hur- hurry! I have a new skin. Whoop de doo! I mean I, I get it. I I, I I do to a certain extent. Get Speaking it. of skins, I okay. Not not to cut you off. Okay, but I'm totally cutting you off because well, of they announced a new bundle for Switch. For Mario Odyssey. Yeah. I was actually, oh my god, they're bundling my, all of a sudden yeah. I'm like, just read Joy-Cons. Yeah. yeah. Right. Monster Hunter Double Cross in Japan has an actual custom modification to the dock itself. They actually have like a custom skin like painted on it and all nice. You Why is Capcom cons. able to do that, but Nintendo can't do that for Mario? You it's just red Joy Cons. Like I understood it with Splatoon. I'm like, okay, yeah. well, Splatoon's not big enough, right? So you just do the Joy Arms isn't big enough, so you're just gonna do these Joy Cons right. or or the Pro Controller like they did. Right. And and they have a custom Pro Controller, I think, for Xenoblade. Yes, they do. Uh, which, which looked cool. I, I wasn't really into the pink on the sides, um, just because I didn't. It didn't feel like it felt them like it fit thematically, but who knows? Mm-hmm. You know, maybe once I see some more high res images of it, I think it's fine. Because uh, so far, I love what they did with the Splatoon one. But they're like, we have this Mario Odyssey bundle, and you get... Mario Odyssey Joy-Cons. Joy- you, get Mario- you get red Joy-Cons, and you could already buy neon red Joy-Cons, but yeah. okay. So you get red Joy- Mario red yeah, Joy-Cons. Yeah, I know, I know. They're, they're, they're not as uh, bold. Yes. Um, so so yeah. you have... You have the Mario Joy, and you, and you get the Mario uh, case, which I get. Which is cool. It's probably... I mean, if it costs two ninety nine, and you get the game... Uh, that alone's worth it because it's the first time they bundled the game in with the platform and sold it at two ninety nine in the United States. So that is a big deal. 
and, and that's awesome mm-hmm. for the holidays. But it's still it's one of those. Y- y- you could. Y- well, how come the, how come Monster Hunter can do more than you? Right, and you're Nintendo. This is your console. Come on. Yeah. Well, it's probably because they wanted to, and it sounds like sure, why not? But like we don't want to, so we're not going to. Yeah, right. It's like it almost. I hate to say it feels cheap, but it feels cheap. It does. It really does. Because think about this. You want you want uh, you want uh, something custom for Splatoon two besides Joy Con colors, which you can customize yourself if you really want. Oh look, they have a pro controller that's customized. Xenoblade two has a pro controller that's customized. Monster Hunter Double Cross has a dock that's customized. Yeah. Mario just has color Joy Cons. It's yeah. getting the same treatment. How how, how yeah. is Mario Odyssey getting the same treatment as Splatoon two in arms? Yeah, that's what I don't get. Shouldn't shouldn't it be? Like Zelda was its launch, right? You weren't right. you weren't gonna you know, they were focused on collector's edition and launch. Right. That's fine. Right. But now like if you're gonna bundle Mario Odyssey and come on, man. Yeah, it, look at how, how, how many custom consoles the PlayStation 4 have. How awesome would it be to have a pro controller that's red like Mario's hat with the eyes in it? With the, so it looks like the, the, the pro controller is it, taken it, over. It, it's taken over by Mario, yeah. Yeah. That would be awesome. I mean, Come on, Nintendo. I get not customizing the Switch, like the unit itself, yes. the, the tablet, even though I feel like you could. Yeah. I get it. But, like, customizing the dock isn't that big a deal. It's plastic. Come on. Right. Again, put the eyes on it. Make it look like it was taken over by the... Uh, it feels it missed have. opportunity. Right. Just disappointing. Right. Again, though, if it's bundled together and it's two ninety nine, it's a great deal either way. Right. Um, so I'm not saying don't go out and get the bundle. I'm just saying it feels like Nintendo could do better. Anyways, I think that's going to wrap it up for this this another round react. It went a little longer than I planned, but yeah, that's the way it goes. It was a long direct, so we had a long reaction. Uh, about, yeah. about as long as the direct itself, but there, that's just there was a lot of stuff to talk about. We didn't even talk about all of the indie games. There there, there were a, right. a number of high quality games shown off. Uh, and I always thought like one big announcement that, that you were like I don't care about Minecraft coming to 3ds. It, I know I get it. It's Minecraft. Who cares? It's on every platform in the right. whole world, anyways. But I mean, like, isn't 3ds one of the least powerful platforms that's ever released on? Yeah, probably. Because tablets and phones yeah. are more powerful than my 3ds. Yeah. So it's like yeah, true, true, very um, true. So, but it, it, but whatever. I mean, it's not like oh, it's it's, it's a big almost, impressive again, thing. It's, it's one of those things that's on every platform. Am I really surprised? No, but now I can no. get my daughter a 2ds XL instead of a Switch and buy her Minecraft. Yes. Oh, make sure you get the one that's the Especially orange. Especially since I probably can't even find a Switch. Especially get the one that's the orange border because it, it's white with an orange border. That come on. No, she's getting Nintendo Prime Blue. Right. Exactly. That's the way it's happening. Right. Because because daddy's gonna be playing with it, right? I'm not playing Minecraft. I'm not gonna be playing with it. I'm just gonna know, put it as background fodder in my videos. For for me, with just going back to that skins really quick. Yeah. Um. For me, I understand like a like a console or like a game exclusive skin. I understand those being big hype and stuff like that. But did you really have to announce an all, all white with just an orange border 2D 2D XL? Well, that's what the mean, that's the style of 2D XL. Right, it's a solid color with the border. Okay, like, that's how that's I, the style. But I mean, like if you had a game, like a game, it's just version. like well, it's just like with the the 3ds. Forget the customized version of 3ds. They they announce the colors: the the red, the blues, the the oranges, the whites, the whatever. They they always do announcements for each new color. It's just like yeah, with phones, they do know. announcements of the new colors. They just announce yeah. like the Apple iPhone eight and the X and and all the colors for that. Like it, people care about colors. <laughs> I, I don't know. To me, it's just... My daughter wants a pink yeah. 2D SXL. Right. Unfortunately, they don't exist. Right. Until I, I take know. a spray so, can to it. Right. <laughs> right. To me, it was just kind of one of those things that it's like, okay, sure. You know what made me really confused? They released the new Nintendo 3DS here. Not the XL, just the new Nintendo 3DS in like Animal Crossing bundle and stuff. Yep. And it had customizable faceplates, and I'm like, that just felt like it would have been a gold mine here. They just never did anything with it. Yep. Uh, yeah, just, yeah. Just, just, just I, I understand the XL version, even in Japan, was outselling the new Nintendo 3DS, but it's just interesting. I felt like that was actually a really good idea that Nintendo just didn't execute very well. Right. right. Anyways, folks, but, yeah. that's going to do it for this. Uh, as always, was, well, not as always, but for this Nintendo Prime Reaction, joined by Mr. Eric Moore. And I'm Nathaniel Ruffle Jantz. If you like this reaction, give it a like. If you dislike it, that's okay. Hit that dislike. Let us know your feelings about the Nintendo Direct down in the comments below. As always, subscribe for more, and I'll catch you in the next one, and Eric will see you in the next segment of the podcast, which releases tomorrow. See you later.